Member for Nepean. Speaker, recently I was pleased to attend the opening of Hollier House, a affordable housing structure which has funding of 2.72 million from the federal government. Hollier House is a new four-story, 35-unit, mixed-use apartment building in Ottawa's West End, the Bells Corners neighborhood. The building also is home to a community health and resource center or the Western Ottawa Community Resource Center and FAMSAC Food Cupboard. The federal government funded $100,000 for the community room located in Hollier House. Thanks to Anglican uh, Diocese of Ottawa and the Christchurch Bells Corners for making this possible. This is an excellent example where our federal government has partnered with a willing organization to meet the mutually shared objective of addressing affordable housing and other needs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon's Grass Saskatoon Grasswoods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to congratulate my member of the Legislative Assembly in Saskatchewan, Don Morgan, on his retirement coming up this fall. Don graduated from the University of Saskatchewan College of Law in 1978. Between 1988 and 1992, he was chair and CEO of Saskatchewan Legal Aid Commission and was appointed as King's Counsel in 1990. Don was first elected to the Legislative Assembly in November of 2003 for the SAS Party and has served ever since. He had a number of portfolios, Minister of Justice and Attorney General, Minister of Education, Minister of Advanced Education, and many more. Don served his constituents of Saskatoon Southeast faithfully, and he will be deeply missed. Congratulations, Don, on your upcoming retirement. It's well deserved. The Honourable Member for Milton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As Canadians, we join in the celebration of Africa Day with immense respect and admiration for the continent's rich history, cultural diversity, and remarkable achievements. Africa Day is a powerful reminder of the enduring ties between Canada and Africa. These ties are rooted in the shared values of democracy, human rights, and sustainable development. The writing of Milton is fortunate to have a beautiful, diverse, growing African community. It is a vibrant community which reminds us of the beauty of life and values of the African continent. I have had the honor of visiting many places in Africa, Morocco, Egypt, Tanzania, Madagascar, Mali, Liberia, and Benin. I have also climbed Kilimanjaro twice to raise money for NGOs like Right to Play and Water Aid. And I look forward to visiting the great continent of Africa once again. Let us celebrate Africa Day and continue to work towards peace, prosperity, and solidarity, both at home and abroad. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Mr. Speaker, I want to pay tribute to three great Canadians who recently passed away. Jerome Abraham struggled with addiction for many years before entering the recovery program at Discovery House in Penticton. After treatment, he went on to lead Discovery House through a period of dramatic growth, helping so many men get their lives back and return to their families. We lost Jerome to cancer earlier this spring, but will always be inspired by his legacy. Laura Savinkoff was the center, the heart, of a very active peace community based in Grand Forks. I last saw Laura at a workshop she organized to discuss the horrific situation in Gaza. She died suddenly two weeks later, gone too soon, but we will remember her spirit. Finally, I want to mention the passing of Dr. Bruce Falls, a noted scientist and humble champion of nature conservation in Canada. Bruce died last month at the age of 100 after a lifetime of inspiring service to his country. The Honourable Member for Sydney, Victoria. Mr. Speaker, our love of music brings us together as Canadians, but it's tough for our working musicians right now. 
This week, I spoke to Juno-winning musicians who spoke to the struggles of being a musician because of anti-competitive ticketing companies. Thankfully, the United States Justice Department has moved forward on an antitrust lawsuit against Ticketmaster and Live Nation Entertainment for their anti-competitive practices. With this monopoly, it's hard for Canadians' fans to support our local musicians and venues. Our world-class artists deserve full crowds and vibrant local venues. Our government has strengthened the powers of the Competition Bureau, invested historic amounts in arts and culture, including the Canada Music Fund, and supported live events through the boosted Canada Arts Presentation Fund. Mr. Speaker, let's even the playing field so that the working recording artists and musicians that create the music can thrive rather than giving monopolies that squeeze our hardworking musicians. The Honourable Member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Eighty years ago this week, the brave soldiers of the Perth Regiment were fighting in the Casino region of Italy. On May 26, 1944, shortly after the Hitler line was, was breached, the Perth Regiment moved into the Leary Valley where they were heavily shelled by the enemy. But the brave fighting Perths advanced forward. Over the next several days, they crossed the Leary River and liberated the town of Ciprano and moved forward to Armnara. Several Canadian heroes made the ultimate sacrifice. Among them were Corporal John McRobb of St. Mary's and Private William Simpson and Private Jack Bailey, both of Stratford. Private Wilfred Scott of Cromarty, who was serving with the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment, also lost his life in that battle. Days later, the world's attention would turn to D-Day, but we must never forget the courage of those who fought and those who fell in the Italian campaign. Mr. Speaker, we will remember them. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Yukon. Illegitimus non carborundum. That was the defiant motto at the White Horse Star, Mr. Speaker, a paper which this week published its last edition after serving the Yukon for 124 years. First published from a tent, the White Horse Star is a living record of the Yukon's colourful history. Fire and flood, disasters, royal visits and funerals, elections at all levels, First Nations signing of modern treaties, plane crashes, even White Horse's own dramatic events on September 11, 2001. Further back is the story of the Dawson City Nuggets and their intrepid journey to Ottawa in 1905 to challenge for the Stanley Cup. In more modern times, it seemed not a single event occurred where the star was not there to capture the scene with photos or a story. The star was local news at its best, connecting Yukoners from the local to national and international events and personages. This star has set, but local news must go on. Thank you to the many dedicated staff who made the White Horse star come alive day after day. Illegitimus non carborundum. Don't let them grind you down, Mr. Speaker. Congratulations. The Honourable Member for Burlington, we'll try that again, Oakville North Burlington. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canada came to Oakville last week when the Junior A Hockey National Championship was hosted at 16 Mile Arena by the Town of Oakville and the Oakville Blades. Players and fans from across Canada came out to see their favourite teams battle it out for the 2024 Centennial Cup. The tournament significantly benefited Oakville's thriving economy, bringing in more than $5 million in economic benefit. I attended the thrilling final game when the Collingwood Blues beat the Melfort Mustangs 1-0 to win the 2024 Centennial Cup. Congratulations to Collingwood on their national championship win and to the Calgary Canucks' Julian Gervais, who won the tournament Most Valuable Player. 16 Mile Arena is the only venue in Canada that has hosted major national events for Hockey Canada, Skate Canada and Curling Canada. Huge thanks to Todd Carey, manager of 16 Mile Sports Complex, Jamie Angus and the team for another successful event. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, more Canadians are hungry and homeless. The latest Salvation Army report reveals alarming statistics. 68% of Canadians now rely on discounted food and 44% have to cut the grocery bills just to make ends meet. A staggering 40% are forced to buy less nutritious food due to cost, while 26% skip meals because they can't afford groceries. That same report now says that one in four young adults are relying on food banks. The Calgary Food Bank report says that 44% of their users are feeling worse off than it did last year. With so many empty stomachs and families continuing to struggle to get affordable food onto their tables, what is the NDP Liberal government's solution? Why? It's more big government greed. It's higher carbon taxes, more payroll taxes, and more tax on tax. Now, the residents of Calgary Shepherd know that this Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. And what they want is a common sense Conservative government, and they want it now a government that will axe the tax, build the homes, 
fix the budget and stop the crime. Let's bring it home, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Louis. In my riding of Lac Saint-Louis provides a resting place for over 17,000 military service members and their immediate families. It is also a valued space for the community to regularly gather to honour those who have served and fought for Canada. Dimanche prochain, d'anciens combattants. On Sunday, veterans, veterans' families, and many others will gather at the National Field of Honour in the company of the French Ambassador to Canada. Together, they will celebrate the 80th anniversary of D-Day, which was a decisive turning point in the Second World War made possible by the courageous participation of Canadian soldiers. I invite any members who may be in the area this sum Sunday to attend the ceremony. At the same time, it is my hope that the government will soon be able to assume ownership of the field of honour and accord it official status as a military, a national military cemetery. The Honourable Member for Regina, Wiscana. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Liberal NDP Prime Minister, more Canadians than ever are hungry and homeless. The government recently promised to end chronic homelessness in Canada by 2030. But according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, chronic homelessness is up 38% under the Liberals' watch, and fully 80% of homeless individuals in this country are homeless purely because of affordability reasons. The Parliamentary Budget Officer's findings may come as a surprise to this out-of-touch government, but they come as no surprise to ordinary Canadians. More and more young people are unable to move out of their parents' basements, and those who do often find themselves turning to food banks just to make ends meet. This is the reality after nine years of the Liberals and their NDP coalition partners. Everything is broken, and we need a new Conservative government to clean up the mess. The Honourable Member for King Vaughan. Mr. Speaker, a D minus. That is what this NDP Liberal government scored in the 2024 Food Bank Canada report card. A D minus. A failing grade. A failing government. Poverty and food insecurity continues to climb. The Sai Dam Food Bank that services 26 municipalities in the GTA reported an increase of 36% visits by seniors. In the month of April, they serviced 60,000 families, a jump from 29,000 in February. This is shameful. Seniors need help. Canadians need help. But this Prime Minister is not listening. If your children came home with a D minus, any parent would hold them accountable. This NDP Liberal government needs to be held accountable. This Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. Listen to Canadians, get out of the way, and let Conservatives fix what you have broken. I just need to re just to remind need to remind honourable members uh, to uh, to to run that through the chair and I I I, I, I feel ashamed. Uh, the honourable member for Ottawa West Nepean. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the UN voted to establish the International Day of Reflection and Commemoration of the 1995 genocide in Srebrenica. Eight thousand Bosnian Muslim men and boys were taken by Serb forces from a UN safe zone, shot and buried in mass graves. After years of painstaking documentation, in 2004 and 2007, international courts ruled that the crimes committed in Srebrenica constitute genocide. Twenty-five years ago, I was working in Sarajevo. Every morning, I passed the mothers of Srebrenica, holding photos of their lost sons, begging us for justice. Like one mother who searched all of the mass graves for the red rubber boots that her little boy was wearing on that day. Those faces haunt me still. I hope that by commemorating these atrocities, it will bring some peace and some healing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Many youth in Winnipeg Centre face unimaginable, unimaginable hurdles to success. We have among the highest rate of child poverty in the country, 
at almost 40 percent. But Winnipeg's frontline organizations are leading the way and rising to this challenge. This includes resource assistance for Youth Incorporated, otherwise known as RAE, that provides support services and training programs to youth who are most marginalized by systems, such as the Level Up Education and Work Placement Program, which has empowered 700 and 75 youth to join labor markets or post-secondary education. But funding delays by the Liberal government are putting this program at risk, forcing layoffs for 12 staff members and eliminating services for 80 youth at risk. Lives are on the line if we fail to get this funding in our community. All young people deserve opportunities to thrive, and the Liberals must end funding delays and give Ray the resources it needs to empower Winnipeg's youth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Mr. Speaker, Drummond has been on cloud nine ever since our Voltigeur won the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League's President's Cup in four games in front of ecstatic fans at a packed Centre Marcel Dion. We were treated to some truly brilliant performances. First, there was the unstoppable goalie, Riley Mercer, who frustrated opponents with his incredible performances throughout the playoffs. Then, Vosolovod Komarov in the running for the Canadian Hockey League Defenseman of the Year. And then there's Ethan Gauthier, a young player from Drummond, the third member of his family to wear the Rouge uniform after his father, Denis, and brother, Kaland. Ethan was the team's top scorer and second in the entire league. He kept us on the edge of our seats all season, Mr. Speaker, and we will continue to be on the edge of our seats thanks to him for a long time, I'm sure. 2024 will go down in Drummondville hockey history forever. The Voltigeur this weekend will be playing in the Memorial Cup, and this time all of Quebec stands behind them. In Drummond, we are ready to win two trophies in a row. Go Voltigeur, go! The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Food inflation has risen to 40-year high and food banks across the country are seeing record demand. Canadians that once donated to their local food banks are now standing in line to receive help. People are skipping meals because they can't afford three meals per day. It's a sad, sad story, but this is the record of the sellout NDP leader. Since he joined the Liberal government, life has gotten more expensive. Maybe it's because his brother is a top lobbyist for Metro, or maybe it's because he sold out our farmers and working-class Canadians by repeatedly raising taxes on them. Either way, we know the only thing that the NDP leader is looking out for is his own pension. Canadians in southern and northern Ontario, Hamilton, Edmonton and British Columbia are turning their backs on the NDP and turning towards common-sense Conservatives in record numbers. Conservatives represent a return to normal where hard work is rewarded, and not not just for those that drive a BMW or wear a Rolex. Conservatives are going to bring it home. The Honourable Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in honour of Nurses Week to recognize and celebrate the incredible contribution of nurses who are true heroes of our medical system. The theme of this year's Nurses Week was changing lives and shaping tomorrow. And this statement is certainly true. Nurses play a critical role in our healthcare system and in the future of our health. They are often the first point of, for contact for patients, providing compassionate care, emotional support, and expert medical treatment directly impacting their lives. I would like to especially celebrate the incredible nurses of my riding of Brampton East, who are part of the team at Brampton Civic Hospital and medical offices across Brampton, and acknowledge all their hard work and dedication. To all the nurses and healthcare heroes across the country, thank you for your unwavering commitment and service. Your efforts do not go unnoticed, and we are deeply grateful for everything you do to keep our communities healthy. Thank you. Oral questions, question oral. The Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. After nine years, this Liberal NDP government is just not worth the cost of homelessness and hunger that Canadians are facing. Even Canadians who own their own homes are worried that they will become homeless when they have to renew their mortgages at much higher interest rates. Some payments will even triple, according to a new report. When will this government rein in their inflationary spending so more Canadians don't have to worry about homelessness? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. 
Mr. Speaker, it's uh, certainly well known that grocery price inflation is a problem that all countries are facing around the world. Uh, grocery price inflation in Canada, there's some good news that just came in with a report that shows that food price inflation is in fact coming down in Canada. It's at 1.4% in April, down from 1.9% from the month before. That is certainly encouraging news for Canadians, but it's not, it's cold comfort for sure. We're actually addressing the root causes of the issue by increasing competition in the marketplace and uh, investing in a national school food program. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. After nine years, grocery prices have actually gone up under this Liberal NDP government. And now Canadians are facing hunger and homelessness at unprecedented rates. This Liberal NDP Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. Of the mortgages outstanding as of February 2024, 76% of them will be up for renewal in 2026. When will this Liberal NDP Prime Minister stop his inflationary spending so Canadians can afford food and shelter yeah, once here. again. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, let's note, first of all, that this is the same member who called for Canada to exit the United Nations. This is the same member who sat down with other members of her caucus with far-right European politicians. But to the substance of the question, she talks about homelessness. She ought to read the most recent report of the Parliamentary Budget Officer that makes clear that no less than 50,000 Canadians have been supported by this government's national housing strategy and specifically the Reaching Home program that they would cut because they have an austerity agenda that they are ideologically committed to, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals love to de deflect away from Canadian suffering. The facts are, after nine years of this Liberal NDP government, they are still not worth the cost of homelessness and hunger that Canadians are feeling. That's According right. to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, chronic homelessness is up 38% across Canada. Nearly 80% of all homeless people say they just can't afford a home to live in. When will this NDP Liberal government cap their inflationary spending and build the Homes that Canadians need to live in dignity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And again, ironic coming from a member who would, would, has been advocating and has actually written a petition to this House of Commons for Canada to leave the United Nations altogether. We see yet again more disinformation from the Conservative members on climate change and affordability, two issues that they either don't understand or simply don't care about. If they did care, they would acknowledge that Canada is reducing our pollution and inflation is coming down. But the Leader of the Opposition wants to scrap it all. He doesn't want Canadians to receive their Canada carbon rebate on July 15th. He he just wants to make sure his rich oil and gas friends can pollute even more and get even richer, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Prime Minister, more and more Quebecers are hungry. I was in ABTB last week and at the Rwanda Food Bank. There's a very worrisome situation. 54% of the people who go there have a job. We're talking about people who work who have a paycheck, who have money but don't have enough of it to buy food. That's Canada after nine years of this Liberal government, with the bloc blindly voting for $500 billion in inflationary spending. Is the government aware of this waste? The Honourable Minister, my co colleague across the way seems unaware of what we've lived through the past few years. We've been there for people, although they want to cut everywhere. We are here for food security. We have a school food program in partnership with programs. We also have the Canada Child Benefit. Remember when they were in power, they gave everyone the same check. But we have lifted uh, f many children out of poverty. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Things are working so well. That what, look at what happens in my riding of Loretteville uh, area. It's an unusual situation something I thought I'd never see in my lifetime. On a website, someone wrote, I was wondering if someone could trade me two or three home-cooked meals for some work. I can fix just about anything. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about a man asking for food. That's what's happening after nine years of this government, is the government is aware that when they rack up compulsive de deficits, 
we're left with this situation. The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Mr. Speaker, true, people are having a hard time. Also in my riding, I visit people and across the province and the country as well. We meet with people at food banks and with our partners. We went through a pandemic and abnormal infl inflation, but inflation is coming down. And because we are making the right decisions and focusing our investment and help on people who have the, the most need, the greatest need. The Honourable Member from Maniqua again. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals showed up yesterday to save the chair of the Francophonie Association. And do you know what he said? Mr. Speaker, can I start again? Thank you. The Liberal Cavalry marched in yesterday to save the chair of the Canadian uh, Francophonie Assembly. The Honourable Member from Marie again. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal Cavalry showed up yesterday to save the President. This is obstruction. I'll try a third time. The Honourable Member for Manicouagan. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal Cavalry showed up yesterday to save the President of the Parliamentary Francophonie Assembly, and they needed interpreters at the French-speaking association because many of these members didn't speak French. The result, the chair remains in place even though he made very vexing comments. Is this government serious? Do they really think that the credibility uh, of this uh, association has increased? Do they seriously think that this episode has served the French-speaking community here and elsewhere? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, this criticism of the representative of the Canadian uh, Francophonie does them a great dishonour. And people oh, realize that when the time comes to decide whether or not we're going to support people who stand up for Canadian Francophones, the Blanc is mysteriously absent from these debates. We are proud of our colleague. His uh, president uh, of the assembly and shows is his, to his honor, and we want to support him more, Mr. Speaker. When the bloc defends all francophones against violence, insults, I think we're doing our work for all francophones. A few articles this morning. There is a a confidence vote sa saved by this liberal cavalry. Uh, also, the president of the APF. That's the result of this liberal opera operation. They also insulted uh, witnesses. No problem, because in liberals, liberals pr defend each other, but they don't defend the French-speaking community. And something they did do was weaken an, a parliamentary association, the Honourable Le Government House Leader. <laughs> What weakens this assembly is not having more members. It's that the bloc is criticizing a member that has uh, apologized uh, on several occasions for what he said and continues to defend francophones across Canada and continues to honor us as the chair of this global organization which is welcoming to ready to receive people shortly, and we are all going to be behind the president of the APS in the exercise in the in his functions. TT is life, and access to safe drinking water is a human right. But in Nunavut, only eight out of 25 water treatment facilities pass their health and safety tests. The result is a very real possibility of unsafe drinking water for the people of Nunavut. Liberals have neglected to provide healthy drinking water for Indigenous communities. Will the Liberals act urgently to provide the funding that ensures Nunavut communities have clean, safe drinking water now? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we know that it's unacceptable to have any communities without access to clean drinking water in this country. Uh, we've worked really hard at 
the first time in, in our government's history, actually, to put forward record investments around this. Right now, there are existing 28 long-term drinking water advisories, and we have a project underway for every single one of them. We've already lifted 144 long-term drinking water advisories since 2015. 96% of First Nations still have uh, access to their clean water, and we're going to make sure that it stays that way. Particularly the further north, where there's ongoing challenges that are specific to their region, we're going to make sure to work with them for an Indigenous-led, Inuit-led uh, solution to this problem. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Cowichan Malahat Langford. More than 9,000 border workers have voted for a strike mandate. The Liberals keep asking more and more of these workers, like cracking down on stolen cars being smuggled out of Canada, but won't give them the resources they need. Our CBSA workers deserve better. They deserve a pension, better working conditions, and respect. Canadians depend on these workers to keep us safe, but the Liberals are turning their backs on them. Will the Liberals admit that by failing to provide a fair retirement to these workers, they're setting the stage for unnecessary disruptions this summer? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker. Our government is definitely committed to reaching agreements with all of our different public service unions that are both fair to the employees and reasonable to taxpayers. We've already reached agreements with 17 different bargaining units that cover over 80 percent of representative employees. The best deals are found at the table. We urge the union to come to the table. We are happy to negotiate with them. The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Mr. Speaker, the Superintendent of Financial Institutions released his annual risk outlook yesterday. It's now a warning from their own regulator for this Liberal NDP government to heed. Canadian homeowners who renew their mortgages over the next two years could face a payment shock. A payment shock. The root cause of this spike in payments is this government's loose spending policies. Large deficits have driven inflation, which have increased mortgage costs. With all these warnings, will the Minister of Finance take a lesson and reverse her inflationary spending policies? Here, here. Here, here. Well, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Recently, uh, let's take note, the Parliamentary Budget Officer just this week described Canada's fiscal position as top of class. And so did the International Monetary Fund when describing Canada's growth in 2025. We're also, I remind the Conservatives, rated number one in the world with a triple-A credit rating, which has been reaffirmed by independent credit agencies. And when it comes to combating inflation, the Governor of the Bank of Canada says we're on the right track. So let me ask the Conservatives this. Does a Conservative leader intend to fire all the independent experts in the world that disagree with his doomsday narrative? The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Mr. Speaker, that's avoiding every touch point he doesn't want to pay attention to, including from his own regulator. Let's look at the follow-on risks that OSFI identified. Stress in the mortgage insurance industry, investment portfolio risk, asset management risk, insurance risk, all rising. This house of cards does not end well. It's obvious to the regulator and to all Canadians that after nine years of failed economic policies, this government is just not worth the cost. Mm -hmm. Can we see a redo on last month's disastrous budget that will bring back the fiscal balance Canadians desperately need? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Minister of Housing Infrastructure. At any point in time, a democracy is bound to face risk, particularly in a difficult economic environment that we face domestically and internationally, Mr. Speaker. But what I would say to the member, to echo my colleague who just spoke on this side, a AAA credit rating affirmed recently by Moody's, who said that we have the best fiscal record in the G7, the lowest debt and deficit in the G7. Those are foundation points, Mr. Speaker, that will carry us through difficult times. And it is. It is a hard time for Canadians. He talks about those Canadians who want to renew their mortgage. Where were they over the years? We wanted to support them. They were never there. The Honourable Member for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley. In 2020, the Prime Minister's own bank governor said, interest rates are very low and they're going to be low for a long time. This week, OSFI reported that mortgage holders will face a payment shock because of high interest rates. They said the shock will be the worst for those who took low mortgage rates in 2020. Words matter. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister misleading Canadians, will he finally admit he's not worth the cost to homeowners? 
The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, it was great to have the um, uh, independent governor of the Bank of Canada attend the uh, Finance Committee recently. And let me quote him in saying, uh, he, when he was at committee, he said, and I quote, the budget does respect the fiscal guardrails that the government put in place and that keeping the net debt to GDP ratio on a declining track and importantly keeping deficits below 1% of GDP in future years, the budget also commits to those guardrails going forward and that is helpful. That's exactly the words of the Independent Bank of Canada Governor. I wonder if this is why the Conservative leader wants to fire the Independent. The Honourable Member for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley. Also in 2020, the Prime Minister said, Interest rates are at historic lows, Glenn. Millions of people took out low interest mortgages. Tuesday, his own bank regulators reported that homeowners renewing mortgages will now face a payment shock because of high mortgage rates they got in 2020, increasing the risk of default. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister misleading Canadians, will he finally admit he is not worth a cost to people who are losing their homes? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, Canada is proud of having one of the most stable and flexible financial institutions uh, and financial markets in the world. It is also true that Canada's fiscal position is a particularly strong one. What would put that all at risk, Mr. Speaker? The Banana Republic promise of the Leader of the Opposition to uh, fire the Governor of the Bank of Canada, sending shockwaves to global markets and exposing homeowners, mortgage holders, to intense interest rate risk. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are now going hungry and homeless, and the latest annual risk outlook from OSFI highlights that 76% of mortgages will come up for renewal by the end of 2026. Now, the Prime Minister's high mortgage rates are creating misery for Canadian homeowners. And again, the Liberal government's own bank regulators flashing red stop signs. The Bank of Canada governor has said that out-of-control federal spending is not helpful. How much more mortgage payment pain will Canadian families have to face and endure to satisfy this NDP Liberal government? government's big government spending. The Honourable Government House Leader. That me member should know better than to stand up and talk about financial markets when his own leader is the person that has promised to send tremors into the international financial system by taking over like some, some dictator the uh, operations of the Bank of Canada and arbitrarily firing the governor. Right. The governor who, uh, of course, is watching inflation very carefully, and I know he will have noticed that inflation for the fourth straight month is down to the yeah, yeah. Bank of Canada's target range, and we want to continue getting that inflation number down. Right. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd. Well, that overheated and over-the-top rhetoric is cold comfort to homeowners who are facing hundreds of dollars per month of increased mortgage costs because of their decisions during the pandemic. They doubled the national debt. They increased spending by $600 billion over that time period. That led to higher mortgage interest costs. At the same time, when the Prime Minister was saying that interest rates would never go up, they are so low they could continue. And mortgage holders listened to him. They took out more mortgages, and now they're facing higher mortgage rates. So punishing to have a hard time paying for it. So my question to him is, when is the NDP Liberal Prime Minister going to learn his lesson, and is he going to give homeowners a break on his mortgage rates? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. I would take the member seriously, Mr. Speaker, were it not for the Conservative record. Those same mortgage holders in years past benefited from a tax cut to the middle class that this government introduced. They benefited from the Canada Child Benefit. They're benefiting now from the child care program this government has introduced. Dental care where they are eligible. Pharmacare, Mr. Speaker. All those measures that benefit middle-income Canadians and lower-income Canadians working hard to join the middle class are measures that they did not support at all. And they want to fire the, bank, the governor of the Bank of Canada. That's irresponsible. They never answered the question on that. The Honourable Member for Mani Fleur-Pontigny. Climate change is threatening the St. Lawrence River. That's what uh, federal government scientists revealed on Wednesday. Water temperature... Ha 
Water temperatures have reached record levels, up to five degrees above average. Water is depleted of oxygen, and as a result, species such as shrimp are in serious decline. Biodiversity and the economy of our regions are at risk. And yet, while federal scientists are sounding the alarm, the federal government is opening a new pipeline in the West to encourage dependence on dirty oil. Frankly, right in the middle of a climate crisis, when will the Liberals listen to science? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. When we came to the government in 2015, Canada was even protecting 1 percent of its territorial waters. And we have now lifted this to 15 percent, and we plan to protect 30 percent by 2030. This is an objective that we agreed to at COP15 in Montreal. We are investing record amounts in partnership with Indigenous peoples across the country to protect uh, a, greater, a greater portion of our territory. The Honourable Member for Repentini, the St. Lawrence River is the beating heart of Quebec. It's the cradle of the Quebec nation, which has developed along its bank for four centuries. And today, we see that climate change is attacking these shores, threatening biodiversity and jeopardizing the survival of species that have been fished for generations. Meanwhile, the federal government is investing $34 billion in a dirty oil pipeline, the primary cause of global warming. Ottawa is literally making Quebecers pay for damaging their own ecosystems. How much longer will we accept entrusting our money to this irresponsible country? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, the bloc can't be serious. You have before us the first government that has credible targets and a plan to reach net zero by 2050. You have a government that is taking care of its oceans and is fighting against plastics with a series of measures that will ensure that Canada will reach its Paris targets and fight climate change, and also including in the St. Lawrence River. Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are hungry and homeless. The number of tent cities is growing across the country, and the number of people lining up at food banks has grown to over 2 million and continues to climb. The Salvation Army reports that 26 per cent of Canadians are skipping or reducing meals. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. When will he finally stop his inflationary spending, which is forcing Canadians to go hungry? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, in that constituency of the member where individuals might find themselves homeless, she can go back and show the Leader of the Opposition's housing plan that unfortunately says nothing about homelessness. Zero, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition purports to present a vision for this country. It is hollow, Mr. Speaker. There is nothing there on so many issues, but specifically on homelessness. He's never cared about these issues, Mr. Speaker. When it comes to supporting Canadians on a range of matters, from homelessness to child care to pharma care to dental care, they have been silent. They don't care. The Honourable Member for Carlton Trail Eagle Creek. Here are the facts. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are losing their homes and going hungry. The number of Canadians reported food security challenges has increased, and 26 per cent are skipping meals. Costs continue to rise, and this government's plan to raise taxes will only make it worse. Canadians are losing hope. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. When will he finally admit his inflationary policies are hurting Canadians? Right. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, our government has a track record of leading with compassion and addressing and leading programs initiating programs that address uh, the needs of the most vulnerable. Emergency food programs are certainly part of that support system that people need who have immediate needs of, uh, and are struggling to put food on the table. But let's just review. Food Banks Canada said that the National School Food Program was a vital initiative. If the Conservatives are aligning themselves with Food Banks Canada, then why would they oppose a vital initiative uh, of a National School Food Program that's going to feed over 400,000 children? The Honourable Member for Cumberland Colchester. Speaker, after nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are hungry and homeless. 
The Salvation Army is reporting that 26 percent of Canadians have been forced to skip meals because they cannot afford to buy groceries. Our country is suffering under this government and its Prime Minister, who is not worth the cost. When will this Prime Minister axe the tax so that Canadians can afford to eat again? Here, here. Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Food Banks Canada and their member organizations right across this country, they do essential work and they do important research. And I want to thank them for that. And they actually make some recommendations in this report, which the Conservatives have clearly not read. They recommend res more supports for the working poor, like our Canada Workers' Benefit. They recommend improved Social Security, which Conservatives gutted when they were in power. Well, we've increased, improved, and modernized the Canada Child Benefit and brought forward the Canada Disability Benefit. Mr. Speaker, while the Conservatives continue to put words in the mouths of poverty elimination experts, and Food Banks Canada will continue to put food on the table with the National School Food Program, improve the National Canada Child Benefit, and put money in the pockets with the Canada Car The Honourable Member for Cumberland Colchester. Well, thanks, Speaker. It's interesting. Yesterday, the member from Milton at a meeting said he was shocked to hear the report of how many Canadians were actually hungry. So even though they're continuing to announce problems, uh, programs to fix the problems they've created, we need a significant change in government. Once again, Speaker, according to the Salvation Army, parents are skipping meals so their children and other family members can eat. Canadians should not have to live like this. After nine years, of course, this Liberal coalition government is not worth the cost. Again, I will ask, when will the Prime Minister axe the tax so that Canadians can afford to eat again? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, that member's from Atlantic Canada, and I've never heard anyone from Atlantic Canada suggest that we cut the Canada Child Benefit, that we cut and vote against the school nutrition program, that we cut an entire housing program designed to remedy the housing problems in Atlantic Canada. That member should stand up for once to that leader who has an austerity agenda and wants to cut the very supports that are keeping his constituents and helping his constituents meet the current cost of living issue. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Mr. Speaker, people in Victoria want to know that our coast and our endangered southern resident killer whales are protected. Mm. New reports show that cruise ships docking in Victoria are jeopardizing these orcas by dumping billions of litres of polluted wastewater wow. into the ocean. The states have stricter laws, so under the Liberals' watch, cruise ships wait and dump in Canadian waters. They are even dumping in marine protected areas. The Liberals' regulations are woefully inadequate. And with the Conservatives, there'd be even less rules. Will the Liberals stop making the BC coast a dumping ground for polluted cruise waste? Wow. Yeah. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to thank the member from Victoria for her consistent advocacy advocacy for a cleaner environment and a greener future for all of Canada. Indeed, it's refreshing to stand up and talk about how we can protect this planet and how we can fight climate change rather than if we fight climate change. Mr. Speaker, her concerns with respect to the coast and, uh, and the dangers to, to whale species and, 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 and waterborne mammals are important to us and our government, and I'd love to sit down and talk about local issues in Victoria and ensure this government is supporting all of those vital endangered species. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Green Mr. Speaker, CKUA is a source of music, arts, and community as one of Edmonton's most beloved public broadcasters. But they're facing a perfect storm with the inflation and cost of living crisis. They need our help during these tough times. While other Canadian broadcasters receive federal help in similar circumstances, CKUA is being left behind. CKUA supports local Canadian artists and brings Edmontonians together. Will the Liberals stand up for Edmonton and our local media and help out CKUA in their time of need, or will they continue to ignore them? <laughs> The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Canadian Heritage. I thank the Honourable Member for his question and for his advocacy on this important issue. Our government has been there to support media from across this country, from coast to coast to coast, from small communities to large ones. Much of the support for small communities would have been flowing had Conservatives not chosen to obstruct, obstruct, obstruct the passage of legislation that would have had money flowing to small community broadcasters across this country. We're going to keep working hard for those broadcasters, and we're not going to stop until Canadians have that voice from coast to coast to coast. The Honourable Member for Kitchener South, Hespler. Mr. Speaker, on Monday our government unveiled a national action plan on combating auto theft. 
This plan will work in conjunction with Budget 2024 to keep communities safe from auto theft crime. Insurance crime experts have already called the plan a turning point for auto theft in Canada. Can the Minister of Justice please highlight one of the concrete steps in this national plan that will make communities safer? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. Mr. Speaker, the rise in auto theft in our country is not caused by one-off incidents of teenagers taking a joyride. It's perpetrated by networks of organized criminals. That's why we're cracking down on organized crime. These crime rings prey on teenagers to do their dirty work. So we're adding an amendment to the criminal code to add a new aggravating factor to make for tougher sentences for those who use young persons in the commission of an offence. We're also raising the maximum penalty for those who would use violence during a daylight carjacking. We're going to stop auto theft. We're going to stop organized criminals who are taking advantage of our kids. Mr. Speaker, enough is enough. The Honourable Member for Portage Lisgar. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, more Canadians are hungry and homeless than ever before. One in four Manitobans don't have enough money to buy groceries and feed their families. Home prices are out of control and rent has skyrocketed to the point that people can't put, afford to put a roof over their head. How can this Prime Minister keep a straight face and try to tell 40% of Manitobans now paying more than 30% of their income on housing that everything in this country is in fact fine? Or are Manitobans just experiencing it differently? Whoa. <laughs> the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I apologize in advance for not being able to take the Conservative Party seriously with their newfound empathy for Canadians that are struggling with the cost of living. <laughs> they are not willing to step up any time our compassionate government leads with responsible solutions that try to lift people up who are vulnerable. The Conservatives vote against. They vote against dental care, child care, pharma care. They vote against a national school food program. How on earth can we expect anyone to take their new feigned interest in Canadians who are struggling seriously? The Honourable Member for Yellowhead. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are hungry and homeless. Food insecurity in Alberta is now over 27 percent. And just yesterday, the Edson Food Bank shared their latest data with me. They're now dealing with almost triple the food bank usage compared to 2020. This Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. Will he stop his reckless inflationary spending and cancel the quadrupling of the carbon tax so Canadians can afford to put food on their table? The Honourable Minister of Families. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to share today some of the feedback on our announcement of a national school food program in Budget 2024. The Coalition for Healthy School Food released a statement applauding the federal government for the investment and urging all provinces and territories to sign on to this new policy to provide nutritious, culturally appropriate sustainable and affordable food to school children across this country. On this side of the House, we'll continue to make investments in children and family. On that side of the House, they need to explain to Canadians why they won't support feeding children. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, more Canadians are hungry and homeless. One in four Canadians are experiencing food insecurity. Food Banks Canada even gave this NDP Liberal government a failing grade. Forty percent of Saskatchewan residents have visited a food bank. Thirty-five percent are worried about putting a meal on the table for their family. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. So why does he tell Canadians we've never had it so good? Oh. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, this is rich coming from people who sat in the government that led through Canada's worst economic performance in the last 30 years after the 2008 financial crisis. They had no idea what to do, no idea how to get Canadians back on their feet. We have gone through a global pandemic, Mr. Speaker. We have put in place measures to not just save businesses, but people's livelihoods to get this country back on its feet. 130% employment since before the pandemic, Mr. Speaker. They want to cut the Canada carbon rebate. They want to cut the Canada child benefit. Their cuts, cuts, cuts. We're here to support Canadians each and every day. 
the Honourable Member for Oshawa. After nine years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. According to the 2024 Poverty Report, 44% of Canadians are paying more than 30% of income on housing, which is a big F for this government. Mr. Speaker, this NDP Liberal government only gets an A-plus when it comes to creating disastrous policies. The member from Whitby previously stated we are going to have to switch our lifestyles and it's going to be painful. Mr. Speaker, is this the kind of pain he was talking about? How much more pain will this Liberal NDP government intentionally inflict upon Canadians before they axe the carbon tax? That's right. The Honourable Minister of Rural Economic Development. Mr. Speaker, I really find it quite rich coming from the party opposite. We've been trying to get the fall economic statement passed because that's going to give the members in the rural parts of his riding an extra, a family of four, an extra $1,344 a year. That's what we're doing for Canadians all across this country. So please, pass the fizz. We know people are having trouble with things. This is going to help people along with $10 a day daycare, along with dental care, along with, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are doing a lot, and I know we acknowledge that. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Yesterday, while the committee was studying an overhaul of the Court Challenges program, it was dismaying to see a block amendment rejected. A simple amendment asking just one thing, that the Court Challenges program respect the Official Languages Act. That act recognizes that French is threatened recognizes the existence of other laws, such as the Charter of the French Language, which is designed to protect our language, and recognizes the need to foster a Francophone majority in Quebec. What's the Liberals' problem with respecting the Official Languages Act? The Honourable Minister of Justice. No? When it comes to the Court Challenges program, this is a program that was created by the Liberal Party of Canada and scrapped by the Conservatives and restored by the Liberals during our current term of office. We will strengthen French and official bilingualism all across Canada. We're defending minority language communities, and we're all in favor of protecting both official languages all across Canada, as pro which are protected under the Constitution. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, it would be nice to get some serious answers to serious questions. It's disturbing to see the government refuse to require the Court Challenges program respect federal law. Once again, the Liberals are entangled in their own contradictions over French. They still have a hard time recognizing there's only one official language that's threatened in Quebec, and that's French. So much so, in fact, that they refuse to demand that the Court Challenges program take into account their own legislation, the Official Languages Act. Why should the program ignore the different situations of English and French in Canada and in Quebec? The Honourable Minister, I have to point out to the member opposite that the Court Challenges program was set up to protect minority official languages communities from the very beginning. That was the root of the program. The very raison d'etre of this program was to protect Francophone communities outside Quebec and the English-speaking community within Quebec. So our de dedication to pro to protect and promote both official languages is shown in that. That's what we did with the Official Languages Act and what is already there, the protection that's already there in the Canadian Constitution. The Honourable Member for Montmagny. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Prime Minister, more and more Quebecers are hungry and homeless. The Bloc voted for $500 billion in budgetary appropriations. They claim to represent Quebecers, but then they turn their back on them and vote for inflationary centralizing spending. Quebecers are suffering, and the Bloc is voting for more and more money for the federal government and less for Quebecers. Can the Bloc Liberal stop supporting this Prime Minister's uncontrolled spending? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm always surprised when my Quebec colleagues say things like that. They know full well what we've been through in recent years. There was a global context affecting all of us, but luckily the Liberal government was there to help the people that needed help the most. It, was a, it would have been a disaster had the Conservatives been in office. We helped those who needed the most help. There was the child, the Canada Child Benefit. Uh, uh, our approach is to help only those families that need support. The Honourable Member, 
Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Prime Minister, more and more Quebecers are living with hunger, homelessness and poverty. While Canadians suffer because of inflationary Liberal policies, the Bloc continues to encourage them. Quebecers are crumbling under the weight of this broken economy. And what's the Bloc doing? Voting for $500 billion in budgetary appropriations. The Bloc and the Prime Minister are just not worth the cost. Can the Liberal Bloc show a little empathy for Quebecers and think of what they need for once? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That's a bit contradictory, what my colleague just said and what the Conservatives are saying. They propose to cut cut and cut back on benefits. But what should we do? Just forget about the dental coverage that should help not just seniors, but also young people or people with disabilities who need help the most? What should we do? Where should we cut? Should we cut the school food program? Should we fut, f cut the infrastructure program? I'd like to know what they would cut to reduce spending. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bose. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this block-backed Liberal Prime Minister with $500 billion in inflationary centralized spending, one firm in five can't make their debt payments. Our farmers are crying out to the government. The Liberals are adding insult to injury by cutting funding to 4-H clubs all across Canada. These 17,000 young people and 7,000 volunteer leaders are training the next generation of farmers. When will this Liberal government stop hurting the agricultural sector and instead help feed our already starving population. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleagues have a short memory uh, about what the Conservatives did when they were in office. They cut back on agricultural programs, on research and innovation for agriculture. They cut hundreds of millions of dollars to help small farmers deal with crop risk. So we've been there. We've helped farmers be more resilient and more resistant to climate change, more innovative. We've helped to develop new markets as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Laval Les Îles. Mr. Speaker, women are the driving force behind the economy. We need to equip women even better so they can pursue their dreams, succeed and flourish. It's not just the sensible thing to do. It makes sense economically, too. Can the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Official Languages tell the House what the government's doing to improve the situation of Canadian uh, women, female Canadian workers? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague from Laval Les Îles for this important question. Our government believes in setting women up for success. That's why we created $10 a day childcare. That's why contraceptives will be free under our farmer care plan. That's why we'll always stand up for a woman's right to choose. Mr. Speaker, we support families at every opportunity. And what do the, what do the Conservatives do? They vote against every step of the way. Saskatoon University. After nine years, something is rotten in the state of Canada, more specifically in Ottawa, and we all can smell it. That's why there's a public inquiry on the foreign interference in the first place. But this government is once again trying to cover it up, redacting documents they have already promised to send to the Commission. Today, I speak for all Canadians when, we, when I say we all know this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. So exactly what is the NDP Liberal coalition government hiding? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, as the Minister pointed out yesterday, the member opposite might wish to speak to his House leader because in drafting the terms of reference for the inquiry, all parties in this House agreed to those terms, which included redactions for things like cabinet confidence and client solicitor privilege. So it's pretty insincere, Mr. Speaker, for Conservatives to agree to the process and now criticize that very process. We've been clear with Canadians and we will continue to work to deal with foreign interference unlike Conservatives who felt it didn't politically advantage them. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon University. Well, the cover-up coalition continues, Mr. Speaker. Trust is one of the most precious things and after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians have learned exactly how much they can, uh, how much they can trust Liberal promises. 
this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. The Minister promised the Commission would have complete access to the evidence, and yet they haven't given the government what, what the government promised. In fact, the government did the exact opposite and is trying to cover up everything. When will the Liberals finally quit with the cover-up and tell the Canadians the truth? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I'm curious what point percentage system the member opposite operates off of for repeating Conservative slogans in one question. Perhaps if the member opposite actually looked into the process on the inquiry instead of rehearsing and practicing slogans, he would know that his own leader signed off on the process, which included some redactions for uh, client solicitor privilege and co cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, they should spend more time on understanding interference and less time acting. The Honourable Member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Mr. Speaker, pulmonary arterial hypertension, also known as PAH, is a disease that blocks arteries in the lungs, causing high blood pressure in the lungs and damaging heart tissue. Patients diagnosed with PAH have on average three years to live. In the United States, a drug called Sotatercept was recently approved by the FDA. This drug increases quality of life and increased lifespan for PAH patients and even in some cases reverses the damage caused by the disease. Mr. Speaker, when will this life-saving drug be approved for use in Canada? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the... The Honourable, Par the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Well, thank you very much, Speaker, and I want, the, I want to thank the member opposite for, for a very thoughtful question. Uh, of course, our number one priority is to protect Canadians, to make sure that they have all the necessary uh, medications available to them. That's why we're actually bringing a pharma care legislation by Bill C-64, and I really hope the member opposite will support that bill because it's going to allow for, for Canadians to have access to, at the initially, diabetes and contraceptives. As in relation to the particular medication the member speaking of, I look forward to looking into it, working with him so that we can, I can give him a more precise answer on the approval process for that particular medication. The Honourable Member for Melpec. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Parliamentary Secretary to Ag Agriculture and Agri-Food. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative Party continues to delay Bill 234. I'm wondering if the Parliamentary Secretary to Agri-Food and Agriculture can give us an update. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, a month ago I rose in this place and I talked about the Conservative delay on 234, a bill that they've been championing. Again this week we found out they delayed it two weeks forward uh, again to play politics on the farmer's back. On this side of the house, we act. On this side of the house, we support farmers and we're proud of farmers. What we don't do is play politics on their backs. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Meshkigawa Cree region is ground zero for underfunded and systemically racist federal health policy. Yet through it all, the Winnebago Health Authority has worked hard to establish quality health care and proper facilities. And yet at the 11th Hour, the Minister of Indigenous Services walked away on her commitment to build a proper hospital. On Monday, national, regional, provincial leaders on health and Indigenous rights will be coming to Ottawa to hold this government to account. They want to know, why did the Minister break her word to the people of James Bay? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Indigenous Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And for years, we've been working with Waha and the communities it serves to shape the future of health care delivery. Con conversations are ongoing with all partners as every level of government has a role to play to ensure health care for remote communities. From Toronto to Kenora to Mus Musone, everyone deserves quality health care regardless of who or where they are. We will keep worth working with Ontario and with Waha to find a path forward. Thank you. And the Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise on a very painful, difficult point, and one of which the government is aware. A Canadian citizen, a much-loved member of Fredericton's community, Frederick Moanangabo, has been in hands of brutal kidnappers in Goma, in Congo, since mid-December 2023, five long months. Freddie is a much-loved member of the Fredericton community, a human rights advocate, a human rights activist, and his family wants him home. Can the government give us any update as to what is being done to get him out of the hands of murderers and thieves and criminals and get him home? 
The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for her continued advocacy on this case. We're aware of reports that a Canadian citizen was kidnapped in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We're in contact with the family, and I have met with the family. Kidnappings are an extremely sensitive matter given the risk to a kidnapped victim's life. Due to safety and privacy reasons, no further information can be disclosed on this specific case. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that's all the time we have for question period today. Have a great weekend, folks.